Go ahead. It didn't do, it didn't do it this time. It's recording. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joanna. So um we'll go around, we'll just introduce ourselves and uh who just jump on because I don't know who to tell who goes where. <laughs> so um I'm Giovanni D'Amato. Um I'm the chair of the Veterans uh, Affair Committee. Um, and I'm an assistant principal of uh, the Williamsburg High School for Architecture and Design, which is on uh, North 6th and uh, Roebling. Um, and I live in the neighborhood. I grew up here also. All right. Anyone else? Well, I'll go jump in real quick. I'm Phil Caponegro, Community Board and Veterans Affairs Committee uh, member. I'm Mike Hoffman. Can you hear me? Yes, Michael. Yep. Yeah, I'm a Vietnam veteran, Navy veteran, and it's my second meeting. Glad to be here. Good, Michael. I guess I'll jump in. It's Evelyn and Eric Matichak, uh, community residents, uh, lifelong fourth generation and third and fourth generation. And we, uh, this is meeting. this is our second meeting, and we're happy to see everybody. Thank you. More people too. Hey guys, can you hear me? Mic check. Yep. Okay. Uh, Vinny Piccolo, New York City Parks. I'm the park manager for Community Board One. And I'll just jump on after him. Mary Salak Hussein, the North Brooklyn Parks Director. Everyone, this is Anya Hoyer from Partnerships for Parks. Just trying to get my camera working, but nice to meet all of you. Um, good evening, all. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? My name is Andre Shariga. I'm here from the Department of Veteran Services. Um, actually, right down the hall from um from you guys. Um, but just joining into, uh, just kind of make connections here. So you know, I'll let you guys you know do your normal you know flow, and then whenever you can plug me into. Say my few words, I'll, you know, do that. Great. Welcome. Hi, I, do you mind? Do you want me to introduce myself? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I know some of you. My name is Heather Butt. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an assistant professor at Columbia University at the School of Public Health. Um, and uh, I do a lot of research around, uh, among other things, history of medicine and civil war history. But um, for these purposes, I run a nonprofit called Health for Youth that works a lot in Brooklyn and Staten Island um, to do cleanup projects and park projects. I've worked with partnerships and parks before. So it's nice to see you again, some of you. <laughs> Should I introduce myself? Mm-hmm. I'm Laura Hoffman. I'm Mike Hoffman's wife, uh, wife of a uh, Navy veteran, and also very active in environmental, waterfront, and parks issues in the neighborhood. And then Jody, I think. Yeah, the that's just one. me. Left, um, Jody Love from Friends of McGulrick, and we heard about this through Mary. And um, we're just interested in hearing about any opportunities to support any veterans events um, coming up in McGlorick. Okay, cool. Very good. So, um, if I haven't left anyone off, my screen is acting all crazy. Welcome, everyone, and thank you guys for coming tonight. Um, we're going to just start off with um, a little presentation from Andre. Uh, from Veterans Affair, uh, Veteran Services. That way we could, um, you know, just start the conversation. Uh, and because at the last meeting, we started talking about possibly doing some cleanups of the memorials, which is why the parks is here in full force, which is great. And why I called in uh, Heather, who always seems to rile up some kids to like get out there and do some cleanups. So, um, you know, <laughs> we'll, but we'll start off with the official uh aspects of this committee which is um finding out about the services that are available uh to the vets so um andre whenever you want to start it's all yours 
Not a problem. Thank you. Good evening, all. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, give me one second. I'm just trying to pull up my small. I'm not going to go through the whole presentation as far as um, the slide deck we use. This one that I have is um, the most current one we have, which is a little more, a lot more detailed. And for for me and and this meeting, this initial meeting out on with you guys is more so just a communication um um of thing, in the sense of COVID has definitely changed a lot of things over the last couple of years um and how things operate within city government itself. Um, and especially with our agency. And one of the things that we realized that happened in that space of time is that we lost connectivity with a lot of entities that we would normally associate with, you know, especially on the veterans um, on, on the veterans front. Um, so, you know, part of this process of, of being a part of this meeting is something that we've done. Um, we're myself and Nicole Jordan Jones is my supervisor. We're both doing at different times with pretty much all the community boards. We've connected with all the community boards so far. We've connected, but um, reconnected with all of the borough presidents so far. Now we're moving on to connect with the um, city council members, and we're going to try to go from to state from there. Um, and all of that is is really just to make this fight a little more collective. Um, you know, a veter the veteran community is a particular community, and it's not well supported in in, in different ways. You know, um, as I've been here six of the seven years, this agency has been in operation, and sad to say, even in, in, at, at this point in time, we are still not even known to some people um within the five boroughs you know so that's sad in itself to know and as well as that if they do know about us they they usually get the name of our agency um wrong as our agency was initially a part of the mayor's office so it was called department of veterans affairs um but the mayor's office but as since it has been separated and become an official city agency it's nyc department of veterans services you know so in the seven or six six years of, of me being here out of the seven you know it's still you know, a little bit of mind boggling that that is still an issue for us, where we're still not identifiable as a, as a, as an actual city agency that's predicated to, you know, providing services for veterans. Um, so again, like I said, part of this, this conversation just really to connect, you know, just to connect with our entities that are, that are on this front with us, you know, to, to support our veterans and the better we can do that, um, you know, is just being part of these meetings and, and connecting with those other, other entities, you know, supporting each other along the way. Um, by what by by whatever means that is um you know that i see and i see that as well as my agency itself whereas that we can do more if we're connected to others rather than trying to save the world on our own or the, the veteran community on our own you know um we're very we're still very limited in some of the things we can do so the more people we connect with the better we can you know go out there and, and make changes um just so you know i'll do i'll do a couple of rundowns of little things that we do here give me one second let me see if i can share um my screen uh, where is this here we go let me know if, if everyone is able to see yes Yes. Um, and I could I could probably send this guys to you guys too if you wanted to, but um this is our this slide that this talks about our agency and I'm I'm just gonna touch on a couple um certain points of it really. Um more so I'm gonna start here with the outreach and engagement, which is myself and Nicole, Nicole Jordan Jones. Unfortunately, it's just the two of us, right? So even with our outreach, outreach portion of it, we're limited, you know, in the things that we can do. So attending meetings like this that are virtual are very simple. So of course we try to be on those, but when it comes down to any field work where we actually ask to be at a different events and stuff, a little hard to do, but we, we try to manage it as best we can. Um, you know, so that's definitely one of the angles that are, are very, um, very strategic for us moving forward. Um, you know, and now one thing I'll mention as well is something I'm, I'm working on is, um, I'm trying to, excuse me, I'm trying to do an event in front of the building of One Center Street. And there's a big um, like courtyard area right in the front. I don't know if most of you guys have been to the, to the building, but that big space, um, since I've been here in the six years, We've never had an event even from our building, and I'm doing and I'm when I say event more so a tabling event, uh, or more so on a resource style um um style situation where I want to have other uh, other possible city agencies and every uh, other veteran entities that would like to table, you know, would like to um you know be there to provide you know information on uh, resources for the veterans. Um, is one of the things I'm trying to do right in front of this building to start off this new year. Um, I'm most likely going to try to get that set up in April. Um, and we'll definitely try to keep all the community boards posted, you know, whoever wants to be a part of it, whoever we had any recommendations. If you can just, you know, you know, people in your communities that can, that want to come out as far as veterans to get this informational stuff, please, um, you know, let, let them know, but I'll definitely make sure that's out. Um, 
Another area I want to touch on is our uh, in-house in-house supporting staff that actually um, does the hardcore work, which is the benefits and the housing team. Um, we have a, a full-fledged claims unit that actually works on, on veterans' claims. Um, that process in itself, on, on its own, without us or uh, any type of veteran organization that knows that knows that informational stuff, is very hard for a veteran to do on their own. You know, there's a lot of a lot of red tape and a lot of different informational things that are needed to to create that that claim and have it submitted to the VA. So what, what we have done is we've gotten training from the Department of State in regards to in regards to what's going on in regards to claims and how to how to prepare and package a claim for the VA to review. Um, so we've got that training and we've been actually been doing that for the last um, about to say two years now, four years. Um, we started in the midst of COVID in around March. Um, so almost two years that we've probably been doing that now. Um, so, you know, that's one of the um, in-house things that we do that are very key. Um, you, you, the, the, vet, the veterans benefits that provides funding for veterans every month, as long as they get approved. Um, and that's the goal, but they get approved every month and that's um, financial support they can have as they move forward through their lives. And that can help them as well as their families, you know? So that's something that we um, do in-house and we make sure we, we speak on that out loud. Um, the, the other area is our housing team. The housing team has been around since day one of even before I got to this agency. Um, so that's what been one of our strongest attributes here at DVS. Um, and those housing situations vary. Um, I, I don't know all the exact full details of, of different situations, but I know it varies depending on what that person's situation. So those are the two main things we do in-house that we have two full-fledged teams that actually work on those two things in-house. Um, a lot of the other things we do, unfortunately, at this point are more of referrals where we refer veterans to that exact source. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about the source. So we, we only give the, the veterans that information to that entity, that source, whatever it is that they're trying to do, whether it be entrepreneurship, home ownership, um, housing, um, education, uh, you know, a different array of things that we, we can actually support on, that we, we can give direction on who to connect with, what entities will help them with those things. You know, so right now we're, more so a, a referral source, but we're trying to change that avenue by being able to have more resources. We're still working on some initiatives for this new year, um, working through some, you know, this overall city budget constraints and stuff. So there's a lot of different things that we had to change in house, but we're trying to start simple. We're not trying to recreate the wheel all for so, but we're just trying to keep it simple and, and starting with this small task of connecting, um, connecting to all our community was and connecting to the partners around us to make some of this easier um, as we do not have full capacity and full availability to do more as an agency, you know, so the more that we connect with, the better we can, you know, action and, and get things done for the, for, for these veterans. Um, I'll stop there um, in case anybody has any questions, um, anything about that. Andre, what's the best way if someone from the community wants to reach out to the, the office? Uh, um, I can, I'll put that in the chat. Yeah. I'll put that in the chat, all, all the connected okay, information. Cool. Um, but they can always go to um, this information right here at the bottom, which I'll put in the chat as well. They can call our number or nyc.gov backslash vets. Um, that, that'll connect them right to the agency itself. Um, but also, because we're connecting with community boards, not to say that I would say flood or flood us with all your all your veteran issues, but if you have specific things that you guys may struggle with with that whatever issue, feel free to reach out to myself, um, especially. Um, on, on the Cole Jordan Jones, where you bring that, bring us that information, and then we can help you sift through how to how to get it, um, you know, how to get it resolved as best we can, you know. So depending on the situation, if it's if it's more like day to day stuff where somebody's trying to do their claims, um, they want to submit a claim, something like that, I would say just yeah, go through the connected things of calling our um, office number or the NYC um, .gov backslash vets um, online. You can they can always reach us um and get connected to us if it's just a you know overall if it's not an emergency you know we'll, we'll still want people to go through the certain channels um you know of, of the normal processes because we keep a tracking record of everything that comes to us as far as veterans you try to keep a, a database on everybody that comes to us so we do want a certain flow but if there's certain situations where you know there's a rare case uh some type of emergency i would say just contact us direct you know more so especially like myself or nicole jordan jones Matter of fact, let me put that in the chat for you guys too. So. Uh, the chat is not open. Um, if you want to send me information, uh, you can send it over to the community board and we'll share it. Okay, no problem. All right, yeah. Let me see. I as, got this as well one. as your presentation, if you could send it over, that would be great. Not a problem. Okay. We'll do. We'll do.
<clears throat> Will do. Any questions from anyone uh, in the the crowd? We had to have a good turnout. This is our second meeting, ladies and gentlemen, and we have a, a very good turnout. So thank you guys uh, for coming. And uh, Andre, thank you. And you'll be hearing a lot from me. This is, like I said, the second meeting. I'm still trying to navigate. We haven't, you know, the, the board didn't have a, a, a functioning better. They had a committee, but they were a meeting. So this is the second meeting after a couple of years. So um, I'm still trying to learn the ropes of running the committee. But no, uh, I understand, I understand. Like I said, we all, get, I think over the last few years, everybody has to like, had to readjust. You know, to different things in their own avenues. So I definitely understand. Yeah. All hi, right. Andre. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, my uh, Evelyn has a question. Oh, hi, Andre. Um, I just have something to say. Back in 2017, I had gone to the it was the old uh, U.S. Navy Medical Hospital in St. Albans, and now okay. it's the Veterans Administration Long Term Extended Care Facility. And uh, there was a friend of ours that was in hospice care there. And it was great to see that the building was saved and great to see that two floors were reconstructed and it's for the vets who are in hospice care. So hats off and I'd like to see more of the floors. Maybe since then they have been you know, updated, but it's great to see that facility still there for the vets. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Thank you for that. I have a question. Um, I, I just want to know, I, I know you said that the, uh, that there's a very scant um, crew in your office. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. I understand that correct? What can we do to encourage the mayor's office to pay more attention to your to your crew? Sometimes I'm not the person to ask that because sometimes I'm just too blunt and say like, "Hey, mayor, we need some help over here." Like I'm straightforward. With it. Like we we definitely need it. Um, I would say you know on on a, on a real standpoint of of everything being professional and you know uh trying to be um completely correct about it. It would just be speaking up just to say that say that it's needed um i can honestly say since i've been here like i said i've been here six of the seven years and sadly what i've seen is that especially after COVID hit our numbers dropped drastically we were at prior to COVID, i think we were leading up to about 50 um crossing over to get to 55 and 60 60 um staff members in, in total we were leading to go in that direction but when COVID hit it, it it went a different direction and we're actually down to like 20 something, maybe I think the most 30 now or 32, I think, because we had we had a couple of new staff that were able to be brought on. But because of actual city constraints and money wise, we're limited to who we can even we leaving the option of, of putting a posting up to hire someone. You know, that 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 alone is is tough in itself. Um, you know, me personally, I look at it and say is DVS is already a small agency, so why do we have to be limited to, to 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 the people we can amount of people we can hire you know we're one of the smallest agencies out there out in this in city government right now within the five boroughs so it's like why do we need to have constraints on our agency when we're already super limited with staff where staff is literally everybody's probably doing an extra job or extra three jobs or extra four jobs you know so honestly that question i would just say is, is just just saying just getting that message. If the message you can get the message to him and his team, I would say just get the message to them. However, by what by what whatever it means. Sometimes taking a harsh approach may be good. Sometimes taking a soft approach may be good. But just getting the word out that we need the ability to be able to bring on more so we can do more, I think is just a needed a needed thing to say in general. Okay, thank you. All right. Andre, thank you so much. And uh, you'll be hearing from me. Yeah, if you could get your email over to uh, Joanna at the community board. Yeah, I'm going to email the, 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 um, the, um, the BK1 um, yeah. Yeah, um, community board um, email right now. And I'll reach out to you in the next couple of days to sort of talk about ways we could coordinate. No problem. All right. I'll be here. Cool. Yep. Very good. Thank you, Andre. Not a problem. So, um, you know, that's uh, something that I do want to work on uh, is really getting the word out that the services that are available 
and really uh, echoing that where we have departments that are so important uh, that are not staffed properly. Um, you know, all of us that work in the city, we know what's going on these days where we're, we're running on a tighter, um, you know, tighter staff. Uh, we, we, if people retire, they're not getting replaced. So uh, we, we really want to let people know that for the job to get done, we need manpower. And talking about the manpower, we have the whole, I, I, you know, uh, Mary, I emailed Mary and she showed up with like full force today uh, with Carmine and uh, Vinny. So, um, you know, whoever wants to take over, you guys could take over. But the reason why they're here is that the last meeting, we discussed some of the memorials and uh, markers uh, of, you know, to commemorate the soldiers who were lost, the soldiers who fought in the wars uh, that are located in the neighborhood. So Mary put together a sheet, uh, you know, a grid for me. And um, what the goal is and why I have uh, Heather here and which is cool that some of the other local groups from the neighborhood uh, logged on uh, is if we could begin having a conversation over a, a larger period of time of coordinating some cleanups for some of these um, memorials and uh, monuments that are in uh, in the area. So I don't know if, if Mary, either you or someone from your team over there want to just say a couple words and then um, we'll proceed. Yeah, I can I can start. Um, I also don't want to forget about Anya, who will also be working with us um, okay, in District cool. One. Hello, she Anya. For... I'm sorry, it's I'm losing all the squares. <laughs> <laughs> so she's with Partnership. So, um, so Giovanni, thank you. It's a, I think it's a great idea, um, and I just want to say while we can't work on the monuments themselves, um, we do have a crew that works on them. I provided you, Giovanni, and I think you put it in the um, in the meeting notice when those monuments get cleaned it's done yearly by our monuments crew who are um very talented but it's like very specific how they work to clean each monument um but we can schedule with you and we'll work with partnerships for parks um heather has worked with us in the past and it's really nice to see your face again and, and to work with you again um you we can me? yeah we can schedule um a cleanup in any of our parks um, where we have these monuments at any point in time, you just say the word, um, we need a little bit of notice, especially in the peak time. So, like, April, May, June through October, I would say, um, but we can provide all of the tools for cleanups. Um, and then if there's plantings or other things like that, we can, we can also work on that with you guys. Um, I spoke to some of the friends in McGulrick who are here because Giovanni, when I spoke to you. You mentioned that there was a monument in McGulrick, the Argonne monument, which is that one in the middle of the plaza area. That is, um, I think you said it's one, it's 100th anniversary is coming up. Yeah, uh, someone on this meeting uh, mentioned that last time that it's turning 100 mm -hmm. this year. Um, so I, you know, we should yes. do something. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think we should do something special for that. Um, being that, you know, it's 100 years old and, um, yeah. you know, it, it's, you know, it, it's in McGolrick, so it's taken care, you know, taken care of because it's in McGolrick. If you're in McGolrick or McCarran, you got a good location. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other ones need a little bit more of the TLC, um, you know, and I think if, you know, with the with the bulbs, when the time comes with the wood chipping, I think we have a, a nice project for the next, you know, couple of years to get everything uh, going. But yeah, sorry to cut you off, Mary. That's fine. I also have my daughter screaming in the background, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's we can plant around the Argonne Monument. It's something that we've been talking about. And I think, Jody, I think that's something that you guys were also thinking about. Um, but yeah, we can just, we'll, we'll work with you to, to figure out a schedule and we can pick it up at any point in time. And we'll work with Vinny and his team to get all the tools to the site. Um, if there's anything that you have a question about, reach out to me or Vinny. Um, I actually won't be around this summer too much, but Vinny will be your point person. So, um, you know, he can be your go to. Um, and then, of course, Carmine and Anya. Mary, I, it's Eric. I just want to ask a question regarding the, the monument in Goldwick. I, I could be incorrect, but I'm gonna, I'll take a walk over there perhaps. You know, next few days, but the last time we were there, 
around the statue, the gate, right? It was broken open. The, the, like great, open. the gate was broken. It was open. Uh, it was, it was like I, abandoned. I, 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 I might be incorrect. Maybe it was repaired since the last time we saw. Us. So, uh, how, can I get back to you on that? I'll I'll meander over there and check it out. And it re, yeah. re, or, it or re, Vinny and I can take a look. Vinny, does it yeah. sound? Does that? It was a little surprising. A was it broken it. or was it just like unlocked? Both both the gates to the ma uh, monitor and the Merrimack was left open when we were there, and to okay. the Angel Monument. And really, at the monument there. It really needs a lot of TLC. It looked abandoned. It looked terrible. It but, really did. But, but we we just want to correct ourselves. Maybe hopefully it was. It's not like that now. It just happened to be when we saw it. So that would really be great. But we'll be in touch. And, okay. Thank you. Oh, hold on. And there's one other thing. Um, I don't know if anybody is familiar, but there is a um, in the plaza area. I don't know since when the pathways were fixed if the plaza area was fixed or repaved or re, you know was it done anything done over no okay so maybe that's a good thing uh, in the area of the plaza there is a boulder a big rock as i was saying i hope they didn't remove it and there was a bronze plaque dedicated on on armistice day for a tree there back in uh november 11th it was for the people who lost the soldiers who lost their lives in green play like that i think it was about 1918. the bronze plaque is stolen years and years ago but the boulder is still there and you could see where it was where the bolts were into the boulder so my concern is i this is only a suggestion if that boulder can be relocated it was behind the park benches in the cobblestone area and could it be put into where the argon monument is for safekeeping maybe and kind of cemented into the ground and a new plaque and a new plaque to be put back i have i have uh it's a very faint photo of it and it was can you see that it's just so bad she has a she has a photo of what the what, what it actually it, you know this this tree was planted for armistice for 1919 greenpoint for or dedicate it's a dedicated dedicated plaque but it might have been stolen it, so we'll have to check one out. so maybe that could add it to the list of monuments and also you know that it was in mcgulvick park and can it be replaced yeah. and if, if you could send me that photo we'll take a look yeah. and we'll look in our archives to see if oh, we I have just a record ask if you can look in the archives yeah. I'm at. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank and there's one more thing on the oh. over car. It's the 10th anniversary, really, of when the monitor and the Merrimack Monument was vandalized with paint. Somebody threw paint all over the monument. Yeah. And I have to say, the Parks Department came the next day. I It was cold weather, but I stayed there and watched the whole process. How the Antiquities Group from the Parks Department came. And what a fabulous, fabulous job that they did. It took them hours. There was three of them, but they really brought that monument back to uh, its pristine condition. And I, another suggestion is maybe because kids still climb all over that monument, but there could be a sign there not to climb on the monument because the city will end up getting sued if somebody gets hurt. So because we all used to climb on all, all those, everyone used to climb on those monuments and my break and it's very expensive. Yeah. But thank you, Mary. We thank appreciate you very it. Much. Bye. Thank you, everybody. But they did a fabulous, yeah. fabulous job on that statue. Thank you. Okay. So um really now, um next steps would just be maybe coming up with with um you know jody can you do you have my email address um i don't think i have your email okay maybe mary you could like set up uh uh what do you call that thing um i can send you an email 
Yeah, like a chain. Yes, <laughs> that's it. So uh, maybe put us on so that maybe um, I'll put yeah. Heather on also. Yeah, and then great. we could put everyone on and just come up with maybe a loose calendar. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I'm an assistant principal of a high school in the neighborhood. And um, we, you know, we, we do these cleanups everywhere. We go to Staten Island. We go to Brooklyn. We go. We have like an army of kids who just, you know, this is what they do, right? They, they, it gets them out of the building for a couple of hours and, uh, it's a good bonding activity. So, um, you know, we, we have the manpower and, um, you know, it's good to give back to the community of where they go to school and where they live. So, um, come on, you got your hand up. How about All me, right. my friend? <laughs> Giovanni, I've been, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll let Carmine speak first, but I've been waiting to talk. I got my hand up. You, you go, see, go, you see, go Phil. First. you go first, then I'll go, go in. Go ahead, you go. He's doing that on purpose. That's why he doesn't want me. To yeah, do yeah. You know why, Phil? Your hand is it, it goes in with your background. That's why. <laughs> Wait, but there it's off. Yeah. Like, there it is again, pal. There we go. All right, go All ahead, right. Phil. I'll let Carmine talk. Okay, Carmine. Sure? Okay, Phil, whoever wants to go. Right, you yeah. guys can hear All me, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I always try because sometimes I feel like the audio doesn't always work on these calls. It's bad bandwidth. But anyway, thank you all for having uh, having us on tonight. Um, I see faces like Heather and Jody who have done It's My Park with us a lot and know the process and are superstars here. Um, I'd like to uh, formally introduce Anya Hoyer. She's the newest member of the Brooklyn Partnerships and Parks Outreach Team. Um, some bittersweet for, for me, um, but Anya is, is going to be transitioning into being the outreach coordinator for community board one. Um, I'm, I'm still going to be in the borough, but I will no longer be, uh, be covering, uh, district one regularly. Um, but that said, uh, you know, like, I'm happy to have an extra person on the team now. Um, uh, getting back to all the work that, uh, the board would like to do. Um, like the way the process works, uh, we have an app, an application, uh, it's, uh for our, our, our days called it's my park. And we would have you fill out an application, um, definitely talk with Mary and Vinny, um, about what's going to go into that application. Um, typically we'll, we'll try to meet on site before the project. Uh, you know, myself, Anya, Mary and Vinny, others from the district or the horticulture team. And with you, um, as, as you know, the board members, uh, to discuss what could be done logistics. Um, and then, you know, with partnerships with parks, we, uh, we have some tools and supplies that we can lend out the day of the project. Um, it's a really, really great program. We, we run like, I, I consider them to be professional development workshops throughout the year on different topics. Uh, we have a team that, you know, helps. Uh, groups find grants to help supplement their projects. Uh, we have uh, staff on hand to help do flyer, you know, help create flyers and graphics. Also, like it really, really is a great program. But boots on the ground is is the outreach team, and uh, we're we're here we're here to help. Um, oh, the Mary family on here, very nice, very nice. <laughs> so uh, I would say, uh, think about your what your capacity is. I think it's great that you're involving, uh, you know, you know, the students in the school um, and, you know, think about what site is going to take priority, which one might need the most cleanup right now. And maybe we'll, we'll put a meeting together there and we'll see, you know, what Mary and Vinny think could be done. And we'll go from there. And I would say, judging on the capacity at that first project, go forward from there. Say, hey, like we got 10 people, maybe we can get 20 next time. We'll go on to the next site and have a bigger project. All right. Thank you, Carmine. Thank Phil, you can go now, you. Phil. <laughs> Thank you, Giovanni. Yeah, no, I was going to say that the way we're talking now, you know, we're the best people out there because we, we, we run around our neighborhoods. We see what's going on. So we could see, because we have monuments. I, I have a partial list also. There's monuments in all parts of CB1, so we should we should get the word out. We should get out there, keep an eye on things. Come back to this 
to, to this committee meeting and say if we see something, oh, uh, you know, something in McCarran, something in McGoldrick needs needs work on, like we've already heard already. So I think that's a that's a good thing. And in on that note, I wanted to bring this up to Mary and Vince. Uh, we we do a lot of uh, outreach with Benamasessa Square, that's on um, Meeker and Withers. That's the a lot of young, I think it's thirteen young men who died in the Vietnam War. Um, and I think I brought this up to you guys. The flagpole there is broken. There is no American flag and no, you know, Vietnam flag hanging from that. Um, could you please look into it? Um, Vinny, it's, uh, it's, I know I, yeah. Yep. It's, uh, I believe when we last spoke about this, uh, we were attempting to get it added to the flagpole contract for service, Phil. So right. I, I can follow up on that. Can I ask you just, uh, I don't know if I could do this, but is it, is it, is it a money issue maybe sometimes with, with issues like this? Well, in this particular case, there's a there's an actual contract, so it has to go through the process. It's not like just somebody says, "All right, put this put this yeah, money on it." I get it. I get Our it. guys were actually there doing some work this week on the. Um, I don't know if you know. I know you're familiar with the site. I don't know if yes, everybody else is. There's some so. there, there's some Scully and some like ground games there. Okay. In, in between the benches, and our guys have been repainting those. Oh my god! I got to tell you something. I saw those guys doing that. And I went over to talk to the guy. I was like, blow, you know, just getting off topic with veterans and all. But I was blown away that they they would do. I don't know if kids still play that. Like, you know, Michael and some of you, you remember Scully and Hopscotch. They were doing the courts over. That was great. That was great. But take a look into that, Vincent, please. Put it on Absolutely. The I know it's not going to be done tomorrow, but just so it's getting done. You know, hopefully by, by Memorial Day something will be done what 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 would the timeline on something like that be like you know is it six months a year you know like uh for for a flagpole to be taken care of sorry i accidentally muted myself while typing no. uh, um <laughs> question with giovanni go ahead the, well the question i don't know if you heard but like what's the timeline for a repair like that like I know, you know, I, I work in a, you know, a, a school, so we have to put in a request to have like the biggest stuff fixed, and then, you know, you end up replacing the whole side of the building before you fix the, <laughs> the little problem. So, like, how long is it that it would take, you know, for a flagpole repair? Yeah, it, it really depends on the status of that contract and if this site was included in that contract, because if not, they got to do a whole no, a whole nother deal. But um, I did reach out last time Phil asked about it, so I'll try and get a follow up on that and see where we're at. OK. All right, thank you. All right, Heather, um, I know you got to run because you're like teaching classes and all that other stuff, but. <laughs> There you go. Can you hear me? So sure. we've been working with Heather, uh, I think, how many years, Heather? Like 11, 12 years? Yeah. We did, yeah, we did a cleanup of uh, Fidelity Triangle right before COVID. We had a nice event. Um, we had the fire trucks come and, uh, yeah. you know, the family uh, who lost uh, their son on 9 11, mm -hmm. they came out and it was a nice cleanup day that we had right before. The craziness of COVID hit, but um, so but we've been working with Heather forever. We go to Staten Island now to do cleanups, and that drives me crazy that the Brooklyn kids have to go to Staten Island to do hey. cleanups. So now I was like, we got to do the cleanups here. Carmen. Um, so Heather, yeah. welcome. <laughs> yep, exactly. So yeah, so I interestingly enough, I live in Queens. I'm talking to you from Bayside, Queens, right now, but. Um, I spent a good deal of my time in Staten Island. I'm there pretty much every weekend. And, uh, you know, when I'm not there, I'm at the Williamsburg High School and doing stuff there. So I'm excited about this. The only thing I really wanted to bring up, and I feel like, you know, like Carmine knows how I operate. So he's, you know, you know, he's probably waiting for me to say something along these lines. But, you know, the one thing that, like, I just want to make sure we have in place is, like, 
you know, a schedule that we're going to kind of like just sort of stick to. And I mean, like in Staten Island, for example, the third Sunday of every month for the last nine years, we've done an It's My Park Day. Um, and that's rain or shine. That's winter. That's we 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 just did one this weekend. Um, so uh, I think the important thing is just for us to get a schedule together um, and really try to stick to it. Uh, you know, like you know, hopefully we'll have enough people out for the event. Um, but I think if we get that in place and I think we'll be in good shape. So I don't know when we were thinking about starting, um, you know, hopefully the sooner the better. Um, but I think we should just have a consistent schedule, stick to it and just, you know, just always kind of know we're going to do that. So that's just my sort of like little plug for consistencies and schedules. That's it. All right, and really, I think that's what we'll we'll start with the email chain later on. Maybe we'll propose a couple dates, um, and then we'll start small. Heather knows this about uh, the way that I function. We start off small, right. we pilot things, we learn from the mistakes, and then yep. we we build. And you know, we it's it's worked <laughs> for the last seventeen years, so it's it's working. Um, Phil. Do you, could you do me a favor? Can you send me your list? Because I just realized the list that I have doesn't have the Badame Sessa yeah. uh, triangle. Yes. yes. All right. Uh, you know, like I said, I did, I did quite a few. Uh, you know, do you guys like this? There's, there's William Sheridan Playground on Berry Street. There's Sergeant Doherty Park. That's yeah. at the end of um, Meeker Avenue, just before you get on the highway and all like that. And there's Macri Triangle. Yeah, by Union and Metropolitan. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there's a nice. Yeah, we we did a couple cleanups over there and did yes. some planting uh, with Heather. Yeah. Um. All right. So, really, this is going to be a work in progress. Uh, there's stuff that we don't even know exist that are that's out there. <laughs> um, the city needs to get a contract for that. Finally, document all of the memorials yes. that they have. Yes. You know, there, there's like areas that are just there. Um, and we don't even know. Um, okay. Are there any concerns that anyone wants to raise? Again, this is the second meeting I'm, I'm chairing. I'm trying to get the hangs of it so we don't become, you know, uh, uh, the, the parks committee. That's Phil's job. Um, but, I, you know, um, I, I just I want to sort of balance it out, you know, to commemorate the, the work of our service people by making sure the areas that are dedicated to them are, you know, clean uh and uh commemorative but uh any other issues michael you got your hand up yeah i uh i sent you paperwork on the, from the green point yes. yep. yeah mm -hmm. I, i'd really like to look into if there was an italian pow camp down on commercial street so i sent jeffrey cobb an email um he, he you know and i'm going to be chatting with him i'm also read you know heather who wrote, uh, you know, Civil War um, hi history. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to have to do some research. I have a group of kids ready to dive into the archives um, of certain things. But, yeah, it's going to be a little, it, it's an interesting, so for those of you who don't know, there, there's an area of Greenpoint that supposedly was a POW camp during World War II. Um, and so it, it would be interesting to see, you know, <clears throat> some of it, you know, it, I think it's true, <laughs> but we're going to have to like get to all the sources, but I am speaking to, uh, Jeffrey Cobb, I think who wrote that original article okay. and, um, you know, we're going to sort of backtrack, um, backtrack the sources, you know, uh, sort of validate it and figure it out if it actually did happen but i i have a feeling that it is uh true just because of our location to the water uh you know to get people in and out during the war um and it wasn't unlikely that there you know there were camps all over the country for different um you know there were german camps uh, for prisoners of war um you know and so it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me that greenpoint didn't have a pow camp um but we're going to do some research on that. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? So, um, hey, Joanna, are you there? Yes, I am. 
Okay. Uh, can we pick the meeting for March since we're since uh, we're here? Um, you could give me a day and then I will have to just confirm it if that's okay. Because okay, it's not crazy holidays. like February was. Uh, for March, I'm sorry. What was um, how about March? Let's see, one second. Uh, how about March 27th? 27. I think that is available because, uh, yes, the SLA is taking either the 28th or the 29th. So, um, March 27, I'll put you down. Okay. Today. I'm going to so find out this that a, a holiday that, uh, just in case that's a holiday, but for now it's, it's confirmed for the 27th. Okay. So then in the meantime, before the next meeting, uh, the goal will be to come up with a, uh, a light calendar. Um, and then, you know, if uh, friends of McGoldrick has anything going on, maybe we could uh, just a small group join on just to see how they do it over there. We're not here to take over anybody's, um, you know, happenings and doing. We're here to supplement and work with uh, the existing groups that are in the neighborhood. So, um, you know, with that. And then I'll be also working with um, Andre uh, from the department to you know, get more, you know, get a concise chunk of information that we could just get out to all the groups. And then my big goal is by the end of the uh, academic year, which is June, to connect with the local uh, vet groups. Because uh, at the last meeting, we discussed how, you know, the younger vets are not connecting with the older vets. And so these uh, vet organizations are sort of, you know, going away. Um, so, so my point. goal a great point so you know, just my, that my goal is to make sure that connection happens um that's why I was, you know when when they asked for to take over committees i decided to do this one because i feel like we need to get the information out there uh to people who serve the country so that they um you know get back for for the sacrifices that they made so thank you all for being here um, if you need me, you guys should have my email address. If not, uh, call over to Joanna and, uh, she could give you guys my email address. Um, and that's it. Any other questions or concerns? Nope. Not at the moment. Can I just ask a quick question? Oh, yes. Did Go you ahead. have um, a dedication planned yet in McGlork or are you trying to figure no, that out? Not, we're trying to figure that out. So, um, Really, we will look at the. Hey, Phil, are you guys doing the event that you guys normally do on uh, Veterans Day? We, at the... we, we usually do. Well, there's two. Remember, there's two dates for, for yeah. Veterans. There's a Memorial Day, and then there's Veterans Day in November. We always do a big Memorial Gore on Veterans Day in November. Okay, so Memorial Gore is Veterans Day. All right. Okay, and um, yeah, so Jody, to answer your question, we have nothing planned yet, but maybe doing it, um, doing something on, you know, maybe Memorial Day, since Veterans Day will will be at Memorial Gore. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe doing something on, you know, like Memorial Day at um, McGoldrick Park. That's a good idea. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. great. And I just wanted to throw it out there. We have a website launching um, hopefully this week. And we did some historical research and um, found some really cool old photos of the park and of the statues. And we're putting all of that up, I'm still digging around for more photos, but it'd be great to do a call out to the community to say, do you have pictures of you in the park? Do you have pictures of this statue from different eras? Because um, we'd love to include that. We also have a pretty active Instagram page and people just love seeing pictures of the park from previous eras. Um, so if that's of interest, that would be a great um, collaboration effort. No, that'll be great, actually. Yeah, I used to teach history before I became an assistant principal, and I grew up in the neighborhood. 
And when my family came from Italy in 1974, there's a picture of the whole family, the eight kids and my grandparents in McGoldrick Park. And it's like, I, and I've been walking by that bench all these years, right? And then I looked at the picture, I'm like, that's that bench, <laughs> you know? And um, that park is very important to the, to the community. So, you know, thank you guys for the work you guys have been doing. And any way we could help you guys in there, we'll be there for you guys. Um, all right. So have a great night, everyone. Night, everybody. Very successful meeting. Thank you guys. Night, Phil, Bye -bye. sorry about not seeing your hand. Good night. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.